This is a 14 years old girl. She's presented with a history of uh, vomiting fe fever, PU or rather, and uh, amenorrhea at the age of 14 years of age. Has remained, the history uh, spans to three, four months. So let's start the ultrasound and see oh, what is the issue. Now this is the liver. And liver shows as I have shown you in the previous uh, many segments starry appearance of a toxic liver. If psychogenicity is diffused, it decreases. The minor portal where radicals are very prominent. Periportal echoes are brighter than expected normal. And uh, as such, there is uh, no evidence of pleural infusion. No focal lingam is seen in the liver. This is the right lobe. This is the left lobe. Now, this is the pancreas, this area. This is the pancreas. This band of tissue is the pancreas. So the pancreas is normal in size, shape, echogenicity, keeping in view the age of the patient. This is the gallbladder. This is the gallbladder with the portal vein at right angles to its neck. Portal vein is fine in caliber, normal in caliber is patent and we know that anterior to it runs the common bile duct. This is the common bile duct, this is the portal vein, this is the diaphragm, no plural vein. This is the aorta. And uh, there is no adenopathy seen in this region. This is the proximal aorta. This area, this is the cerebral proximal aorta, pyramid and teric arteries arising from it. This is the bowel segment, the duodenum. This area, this, this area is the bowel segment. This is the kidney. In the kidney it is normal in size and in all other parameters. Now we see uh, area. Just a minute. Now this is a bowel segment, distended bowel segment full of uh, equogenic material that is uh, moving. You can see that the movement of the food material is moved, not the movement. This is the bowel. This is the bowel. Note the movement of the area. Is it become a head? No. Uh, this is the.
left kidney, this is the left kidney, normal, this is the supreme, this is the left hemidiaphragm, normal, physiological. The pathology is that all the bowel segments in all of the abdominal regions are seen dilated and you can see the movement of particles within them. Look at the movement of the particles, the speed of particles with which they are moving. Bus better, okay. Yes, here you see, this is the stomach in fact. This is the fundal region of the stomach body. Here I am near the liver region, below the liver, subcostal region. And as we see that all the bowel movement, bowels are distended with fluid material moving within it. Here we come down now into the pelvic region. This is the urinary bladder. This is the clap. This is almost uh, empty urinary bladder and this is the ascitic fluid, small amount of fluid layer that you are seeing is the fluid. Now these are called bowels, distended bowels. These are, this is the bowel. This is again bowel. This is a bowel segment. This one. This is the urinary bladder, this area, and uh, this is fluid, small amount of fluid, this line, this black line is representative of fluid. Now, <coughs> we do see interroop ascites as well small amount of fluid is seen between the bowel segments. As you can see, this is bowel segment. Let's say bowel segment number one, this is two, this is three, and here, this black area is suggestive of interlocus society. Now why she is having amenorrhea? is because the, at the age of 14 years, her uterus weighs 4.0 centimeters in length and 1.24 centimeters in anterior posterior diameter. This is the longitudinal section of the uterus, which is small in size, significantly small in size. This is the uterus. Rest, all of these are bubbles. This is bowel, this is bowel, with this being the urinary bladder in longitudinal section. So, uh, this is the uh, uterus, measuring 4 cm in length, 1.24 cm in the posterior diameter with no endometrial canal seen. In fact, this is a case of uh, intestinal obstruction. As all bowel segments appear are distant, distended with food material within and small amount of fluid between the bowel segment. This is the bowel, this is the bowel, this is the bowel. There are four segments here, one, two, three, four, and this is the small amount of, this black area 
it is a gesture of small amount of fluid within uh, the between the bowel segments intergroup ascites and here again you can see the fluid between the bowel segments and the wall of the bowels are not that thick they are rather distended full of uh, food material and uh, the movement of the food material you have seen now you see this is the fluid this is the fluid between bowel segments and uh, this is the urinary bladder this is the uterus in transverse section this is the uterus in transverse section there is no hydronephrosis seen there is no mass effect thus now the distended bowels on the ureter uh, these are this is the uterus this area in transverse section and these are the bowels distended bowels this is either all bowels and this is a small amount of fluid within the bowel segment So hypoplastic uterus with distended uh, bowel segments in all of the abdominal quadrants. But with no adenopathy at the region of aporta hepatis. Normal gallbladder, toxic liver. This is the starry appearance of the liver which is toxic. Because of the pressure of the bowels, it's not possible to locate the ovaries. With confidence, by transabdominal approach, I can't. So all I am now. Okay, this is a sort of a study uh, information. As uh, in all the previous studies, I have been saying you that, uh, and you also have been, you may be knowing as well, and may have been read. the normal echogenicity of the uh, liver, uh, kidney parenchyma is less or <coughs> equal to that of the liver parenchyma now if you see this is the liver parenchyma this is the right kidney in longitudinal section this is the right kidney now this is the parenchyma of the right kidney a part of it and this is the parenchyma of the liver okay if not here then even from this section sorry you see that the uh, parenchyma lipogenicity of the kidney is raised as compared to that of the liver this is the liver uh, kidney parenchyma this is the liver parenchyma and the renal parenchyma is uh, uh, echogenicity is raised as compared to the liver parenchyma which is opposite to that of the normal normal is that the liver parenchyma echogenicity should be equal or uh, uh, equal or less as compared to that of the uh, kidney parenchyma or parenchyma echo brightness or echogenicity now is the kidney disease it means if you see this situation this means that the kidney is diseased now see again let's see from other view ek lamba sala ke beta saro ko zor lo 
you're not doing it. Now, even from this view, you can see that the parenchyma lipogenicity of the kidney is raised compared to that of the liver parenchyma for self-expression. And if from, we see from this angle, and I magnify also, compare the parenchyma lipogenicity of the liver and the kidney. Now the parenchyma lipogenicity or brightness of the right kidney is more compared to that of the liver. So it does it mean that the kidney is diseased or there is a renal parenchymal changes? There are renal parenchymal changes. Now remember that you should always consider, we can always say this, if the liver is normal. Now, see the liver. This is a toxic liver and with diffuse, decreased ecogenicity or brightness. The parenchymal ecogenicity or brightness has gone down to the extent that you can see the minor portal vein radicals very prominent. <coughs> appear as stars in the sky. So this is a case of diffuse, decreased current primal epigenicity. Now, what happens is that uh, by the time the... In such cases, Rumba sounds better. So, oh. What happens is that uh, as the sound waves pass through of the liver with diffuse decreased parenchymal ecogenicity because of some infective process or because of some, or if this is a congestive liver, in that case there is fluid in the liver and, and the uh, sound waves pass with the, uh, more speed as compared to that of the normal liver and uh, it's, uh, it, uh, when it uh, passes with more speed, it, it then it strikes over the parenchyma, goes back, and the echogenicity of the kidney it appears more as compared to that of the liver, whereas the kidney is normal. In fact, the kidney is normal. So had the liver been normal, and we would have seen this sort of a kidney, then only we could have said, uh, we could have uh, kept, uh, you know, made an impression that uh, possibly there is some mild early renal parenchymal disease. So always be careful before giving uh, renal parenchymal disease by seeing its parenchymal epigenicity being raised. Always rule out that the liver is normal or not. Only in normal liver that definition of uh, eco, uh, liver epigenicity and kidney epigenicity comparison will be appropriate. Now this is the transverse section. In this again, you see the liver current primal echogenicity has gone down and the echogenicity of the kidney current chyma, this is the kidney current chyma, is raised compared to that of the liver current chyma. The reason is because of the diffuse decreased current primal echogenicity of the liver current chyma because of which if you know a bit of physics, here physics supply, and you see that the periportal echoes are highly raised. You can see this is the portal vein. And you can see that the, this is, these are the branches of the portal vein. How prominent, how much, the, the periportal echoes are very prominent in liver with diffuse decreased current time of epigenicity. And at times the gallbladder wall will appear thick, but in this case it is normal. So this is the study 
for today. Thank you.